Come up for yard, you'll see better. Come on. Don't worry, I won't ask you for money. Joe Otis could talk a starving dog off a meat truck. Now come up round the front, I'll show you how this works. The man in the thousand dollar suit sold five dollar potato peelers. And you'd send the whole potato to great French fries. Very cool. Lots of them. There you go. His warehouse was his Park Avenue apartment. So where do you keep the potato peelers? Right in here. Boxes and boxes stacked in what was once the maid's room. Really? Yep. Park Avenue. Never underestimate a small amount of money. Gathered by hand, six days a week, for 60 years. Joe's business made him something of a mystery man in this posh neighborhood. Some people suspected that he might be Sean Connery. Just pull the handle, just try it. He's got an English accent, but he's probably from Mobile, Alabama. Who knows? <laughs> the accent was as real as the bombs in his boyhood backyard. Joe grew up in Britain during World War II, learning from pitchmen who set up in the rubble. Joe Squinters, Black Duggy, Heckle and Peckle. They were brilliant. And so, it turned out, was Joe. Big crowd. What's the most unusual thing you've sold? Unusual. Christmas trees in February. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Joe lived the kind of lifestyle most of us only see in movies, but he had no savings. Spent all of his money every month. That paid for his Park Avenue apartment and lavish lifestyle. So when he died last February, what did he leave his daughter? He left me 40 boxes of peelers and a bag of carrots. With instructions on how to gather a crowd. You start working as if you already have a crowd. Just come in the yard, you've got to see this close up. If it gets quiet, there's a tendency to surrender. That's the best five dollars you'll ever spend. My father taught me that you just keep going, even if there are just three people standing there. Customers are attracted to people who enjoy what they do. I think that's the secret of happiness, not doing what you like, but liking what you do. Joe first taught Ruth how to hawk children's books on the street so she could put herself through Columbia University. Before he died, he was determined to do the same for his granddaughters. Me and my friend went to a river and we caught minnows. Minnows? I want the kids to go to the best colleges that it's possible to go to and I want to pay for it. That's why Joe was up before dawn every day, pushing potato peelers down Park Avenue. That's why his granddaughter Nina is up early too, helping her mom buy potatoes before school. Are these the big ones? No, we need the small ones. My hands aren't as big as grandpa's. Ruth remembers her dad like the lines from a cherished song. In every way. He taught her to savor the glorious uncertainty of starting every day with nothing. You get one for five, you get five for twenty. Apple, for apple fritter. If she sells all those peelers, she'll have $96,000 for her daughter's college fund. Well, it wasn't just the peelers that was the inheritance, really. It was the life lessons and the, and the, the lessons of how to earn a living. A lasting wealth. And why would you buy four peelers if they last a lifetime? You've got four friends, that's why. <laughs> with the chance of making many, many more. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in New York City. Here are key points. Tell stories through people. Tell stories about people. Capture the person in their environment. When interviewing, get people to do something. Don't let them just stand there or sit there. Use meaningful transitions to move viewers through elements of your story. Contact me if you have any questions. I travel a lot, but I promise to get back to you.